it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we go. The return to lockdown. Chapter 14, Further Calculus. Now remember, calculus is an area of maths which is divided into two key parts. There's differentiation, woo, and there's integration, woo. So we're going to look at some more differentiation and integration over the next few lessons. Something we have not done though with differentiating is differentiating trig terms. So let's do that. Lesson one, differentiating sine x and cos x. It can be shown that if we have y and y is equal to sine x, well, we can differentiate that. If you differentiate a sine x, we will end up getting dun, 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 cos x. Also, if you have y equals cos x, if you differentiate that, you will end up with, what do you think? Almost, it's negative sine x. Note, there is a negative there. To help you out, I like this wee diagram, so I write int for integration and diff for differentiation, or just i and d, and write down sine cos, negative sine, negative cos. If you are differentiating sine x, you get cos x. If you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x, which means if you differentiate negative sine x, you get negative cos x. And if you differentiate negative cos x, we go our way back up to the top and we get sine x. So if you differentiate, really, you go down. Sine becomes cos, cos becomes negative sine, negative sine goes to negative cos, negative cos goes to sine. This bit here for integration, if you're integrating, you go the opposite way. Uh, if you are looking at this video and we've already done that, then this will make sense. If not, don't worry, it is something we will get to. But you may wish to go off to the side and just write down in a list, S, C, negative S, negative C. And when you differentiate, you go down. Let's try some examples then. So, example one, differentiate f of x equals 4 sine x. So, we can differentiate that straight away, so we're going to have f dash x equals, well because 4 is just a constant, it's going to stay as 4, but differentiating sine, well if you differentiate sine, it goes to cos, so we'd have 4 cos x, and it's as simple as that. Example 2, differentiate y equals x squared plus a half cos x. Here, uh, we don't have any root signs, we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, so we can go straight into differentiation. Uh, doing that then, if you differentiate y, we will have a dy by dx. Therefore, differentiate x squared, what would you get, Sahana? 2x. Brilliant, we'd have 2x. And if you differentiate a half uh, cos x, what would you end up getting? Good, you're bringing in the negative as well. If you differentiate cos, it goes to negative sign. So instead of plus a half, you'd have minus a half. And the cos would go to that negative sign then. So you put the negative just in here. So the plus cos will go to negative sign. Example three, differentiate g of x equals six cos x plus five sign x. Here, once again, you don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, you don't have any roots, so you can go straight into differentiation. So differentiating, we would get g dash x. If you have 6, well, it's a constant, it would just stay as 6. What about cos? What would that become, Liba? Good, it goes to negative sign, so you'd have a negative 6 sign x. And the plus sign x, well, positive sign x would go to positive cos x, so we'd have plus 5 cos x. Woo! Example four, differentiate y equals negative three cos x plus three root x. What would you have to do first of all with this max? Excellent, you need to rewrite this root. So don't differentiate it yet, just leave it as y equals and we want to rewrite root x. What would root x become max? X to the power of a half. Brilliant, so you'd have three x to the power of one half. Differentiating that then, well, we can now do it because we don't have any roots here, we don't have x in the bottom of a fraction, so we can go straight into that. dy by dx would equal, here we've got a negative cos x and negative cos, if you differentiate that, well, you're just going back to the start, that would become positive sine. So we'd have a positive 3 sine x, and then if we differentiate this 3x to the power of a half, you bring the power down, so 3 times a half would be 3 over 2. And then we'd have x to the power of, and take 1 off the power. A half take away 1 is going to be negative 1 half. And that would be your answer. Example 5, differentiate f of x equals 3 plus x cubed cos x over x cubed. 
How would you go about doing this one? HSD Liam, help us out. Excellent, well done, you'd have to split this up. So, you can think about this two different ways. Either you could think, well, I've got the three, I'm dividing it by the x cubed, and I've also got the x cubed cos x, and I'm dividing that by the x cubed as well. So you could split that back up into two fractions. Note, we are not differentiating just yet. We have to rewrite it, first of all. What you could also do is you could put brackets around the top, so you'd have bracket three plus x cubed cos x, close bracket, and then move this x cubed up to the top, and it become x to the power of negative three, then multiply out your brackets. If you do that, you will still get the same answer that is here. Three over x cubed, well, if you move the x cubed up to the top, it become three x to the negative three, plus, and then the x cubed in the top and in the bottom will cancel out, leaving you with cos x. As I said, if you did the did it the other way, if you moved the x cubed up to the top and multiplied it the brackets, if you put brackets around the top, uh, if you multiplied that out, you would still get this. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. What would you do now? Excellent, you would just differentiate. So here we'd have f dash x. From there then, we'd have three times the negative three. It would go to x to the power of, take one off the power, so it goes to negative four. And if you differentiate cos, if you look here, we've got s, c, negative s, negative c. Differentiating cos would go to negative sign, so it would become, take away, sign x. From there, we probably just want to tidy up this wee bit on the left. So 3 times negative 3 would go to negative 9, so we've got negative 9, x to the power of negative 4. Take away, sign x. Sometimes you will be asked to write your answer with a positive index. What would that be then, Ava, with a positive index? Excellent, well done, you'd have negative 9 over x to the power of positive 4. Take away sign x. Well done, Eva. Example six. Differentiate f of x equals one minus x cos x over two x. What would you do first of all with this one? Leah, help us out. Yeah, we need to rewrite this. We've got x in the bottom of a fraction. You could do it one of two ways. Either you could move the x up to the top, so you'd have in brackets one minus x cos x, close bracket, and then x to the power of negative one, if you're moving that up, and that'd be all over two. Or you could split up and think, well, I'm dividing the one by the two x, and I'm dividing as well the x cos x by two x. So you're splitting it into two fractions. From there, we've still got x in the bottom of the fraction, so we need to rewrite that. Lily, help us out. Yeah, good. You'd have a half x to the power of negative one because you've got the one over two, which is a half. It's staying as a half. We're just moving this x up to the top. So it goes to x to the power of negative one. From here, you've got an x in the top and an x in the bottom. Zoom, zoom. Get rid of those x's and you'd be left with the half. Really, you'd have one in the top, two in the bottom. So it's a half. And you've also got that cos x. From there, do you have to do anything else or could you just differentiate? Excellent, well done, you can just differentiate. So we'd have f dash x equals, if you differentiate half x to the power of uh, negative one, then you'd have half, bring the power down, so you're multiplying by the negative one, you'd end up with x to the power of negative two. And with the takeaway a half cos x, you could either think, right, well, it's negative and it's cos x, so negative cos, cos goes to positive sign, so you could just write it as plus, or you could think, right, well, I'm taking away the half, and then cos would go to negative sign, and that would give you the two negatives. Or you could just jump straight to that answer with the plus. So negative cos would go to positive sign. Also, tidy up this wee bit just on the left. You've got the half, just leave that as the half, uh, but then you're multiplying by the negative, so just put the negative at the front, and you've got the x to the negative two, move that down to the bottom, bottom, so it goes to x squared. Let's try another one. Example seven, find the gradient of the tangent to the curve, y equals two sine x minus cos x, at x equals two pi over three. How would you go about doing this one then? Valley, tell us, what would you do? Excellent, well done. You would have to, first of all, differentiate. We're wanting to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve. To get the gradient of a curve at a certain point, you need to differentiate. So, we're going to find dy by dx. Differentiating then the two sine x minus cos x. Well, sine x, if you differentiate that, it goes to cos x. So, we'd have two cos x. And take away cos x, or negative cos x, if you differentiate negative cos x, it goes back to sine x. Remember, when you differentiate, you go down. If you reach the very bottom, you go back up to the top. So, that would become positive sine x. 
That is us differentiated, so we can now get the gradient at that point. Valley, how would you get the gradient at that point though? What would you have to do? Good, you substitute x in, and x is the 2 pi over 3. So, at x equals 2 pi over 3, then dy by dx would equal, it's going to be 2 cos, and then replace x with 2 pi over 3. Uh, and the same with sine x, so you'd have sine 2 pi over 3. From there then, you want to think, right, well, I need to actually work that out. It can use exact values, but it's far better to think about it in terms of degrees. So 2 pi over 3, 2 times 180, divided by 3 will give you 120. So that's really the same as 2 cos 120 degrees plus sine 120 degrees. To work that out, just make sure that you do, you know how to use cast, you know how to use your exact values. When it's 120 degrees, you're thinking 120 degrees is out here. So that's where 120 would lie. One, two, zero, whoop. And from there, you're thinking, right, well, if it's cos, cos is a negative there in this quadrant. It's also 60 degrees away from 180. So that's the same as negative cos 60. Cos of 60 would be 1 over 2, but remember it's that negative. So it's 2 times negative a half. If you're unsure about this with the exact values, look back to chapter 5 with trigonometry and look at the exact value lesson. Sine of 120, well, 120 degrees, again, it's there. Sine's a positive there, and that's still 60 degrees away from 180. So that's the same as sine 60. And sine of 60, opposite over hypotenuse, would be root 3 over 2. Woo! From there then, well, 2 times negative 1 half would be negative 1, and you're still adding that root 3 over 2. And that would be your answer. Example 8, find the gradient of the tangent to the curve y equals x squared over 2 pi plus 2 sine x at x equals pi. So for this one, we've got y equals just what I said there, and we want to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve. Once again, similar to the last example, Sammy this time, what would you have to do? Differentiate! Well done, Sammy. How do you know you differentiate? Well, it's because you want the gradient of the tangent. To get the gradient of a curve at a certain point, you differentiate, and you can sub in that value for x. So differentiate this. How would you differentiate x squared over 2 pi? Adam, what would you do? Good. With the x, you bring the power down, take 1 off the power. Remember this, divide by 2 pi. Pi is just a number. We're dividing by 2 times 3.14, so just leave that as it is. It's just the x that we deal with. So for this, we'd have, bring the power down, take 1 off, so you'd have 2x, and then leave the divide by 2 pi. If you have plus 2 sine x, well remember, you want to differentiate sine x, so differentiating sine, well that would give you cos. So we'd have plus 2 cos x. From there, you could tidy that up slightly. Adam, what would you do? Cancel the twos. Good, so if you cancel the twos, you would get x over pi plus two cos x. And from there, you want to get the gradient of the tangent to that curve at the point where x equals pi. So we're told x equals pi. So what do you think we do then? Excellent, you sub in x to equal pi. So in here, wherever you see an x, replace it with pi. So you would have dy by dx equals pi over pi, because we're replacing x with pi, plus 2 cos, and then replace x with pi. From there then, pi divided by pi, well if you divide something by itself, you just get 1, and if you think about your cos graph, so cos pi would give you negative 1. That's just at 180 degrees, so the cos of 180 is negative 1. Think about your cos graph there, so it's 2 times negative 1. From there, that just becomes 1, take away 2, which we all know is negative 1. So that would be the gradient of the tangent to that curve at the point where x equals pi. One more example, find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals sine x at the point where x equals pi over 3. How would you go about doing this one? What are you thinking, Chelsea? Gradient point equation. Why are you thinking gradient point equation, Chelsea? Excellent, yeah, because you want in the equation of a tangent. A tangent to the curve is a straight line. The equation of a tangent, you think gradient point equation for a straight line. So first of all, thinking a gradient, how then do you get the gradient of this curve at this point? What would you do, Chelsea? Excellent, you differentiate. So we've got y equals sine x, so dy by dx. If you differentiate sine x, that would go to cos x. We also know that x is pi over 3, so that would become cos of pi over 3. And the cos of pi over 3 would give you 
one half. Remember, it's the cos of 60. Cos of 60 is going to be a half. Therefore, the gradient will be one half. After that, well, we think gradient point equation. We've dealt with the gradient. We know that. We need to work out the point. We already know that x is equal to pi over 3, but how would we get the y value? What would you do, Aaron? Excellent. You can substitute that in to what y is equal to. So, doing that, when x equals pi over 3, well, y would equal sine of pi over 3. Remember, you're just replacing the x here with pi over 3 to find out what y is equal to. From that then, that would give you root 3 over 2. Remember, for these, you can use your exact values. This is the exact value triangles. Use them, or if you've got the table that you've memorized, or some other method. Therefore, the point, well, you know x is going to be pi over 3, and you know y is root 3 over 2. So that there will be the point. You want the equation of the tangent gradient point equation, you've got the gradient, you've got the point, now you can substitute it into the equation, which is y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. Remember the two coordinates, the coordinates, sorry, the two parts, you've got a and you've got b, so we're going to have y minus root 3 over 2 equals m is just going to be a half bracket x take away pi over 3. What would you do there to tidy it up? Well, I probably think, right, well, this side I'm dividing by 2. To cancel that out, multiply both sides by 2. So multiply every term here by 2. That would give you 2y minus, well, it would undo this divide by 2. If you times that by 2, it would leave you with minus root 3. And over here, you'd have 1 times the x minus pi over 3, which is just x minus pi over 3. From there, I'm just moving the x to his and the y's to one side. So I've got 2y minus x equals, and if we move that over, I'd have root 3 minus the pi over 3. You can write that answer different ways, but as long as you've gathered your x's together, your y's together, and you've got these numbers together as well, and that will be your answer. Give these questions a shot. They're in the TJ Higher Book, page 221. It's exercises 2a and 2b. Give them both a shot. See how you get on. Good luck. Woo! Bye.